Susan always says, if you do 100% of what works and 20% of what doesn't. Zero percent. But <laughs> Zero percent. I don't know if Gigi's kidding or if she just misread it. Zero percent of what doesn't work. <laughs> See, she even coaches me. Oh, and, and so with this, you really can, with that 100 percent focus, have the life that you've always dreamed about. So that's what's extraordinary, that transformation. <laughs> I have to really focus on Because they're this. already doing 20% of what doesn't go. work, or maybe a little bit more. And it's been devastating, so 0%, please. <laughs> there you go. And that's why some of us are where we are at the moment. <laughs> now, when people really speak about this betrayal issue, I know that Susan tells me, on what do they base their trust? Oh, boy, lots of stories. But on fact or on fiction? So tonight's show will demonstrate, uh, Susan will help us to understand how to create an authentic trust with someone. So that's pretty exciting. We'll get some pointers on this. Take note. <laughs> I know I need to. Now, I wonder, Susan, if you would really tell us what is, in fact, a true basis concerning trust. The only way that you can trust someone is if you give that person the freedom to tell you the absolute truth. So if you have children or ch a child, you have to be willing to hear whatever that child tells you, not whatever it is you want to hear, if your child and you are going to have a relationship based on trust. So if your child knows that he or she will be punished, there's no possibility for trust. That is unfortunate, I know, because many of us were raised in an environment that was all about punishment, and punishment doesn't work. What works is motivating and inspiring somebody based on the truth. So if you already know that you're with somebody who has a tendency to cheat, then there isn't any possibility of trust on that issue because you already know what the habit is so now you have to talk about breaking a bad habit. And most people who are in relationships with people who have a history of cheating don't know how to do that, and that's one of the things we're gonna talk about tonight. Thank you, very realistic. How do we really go about this, making that connection about being honest and truthful and understanding with someone? Well, again, you have to start by willing to hear whatever your partner tells you. Whatever it is, you have to honestly be willing to hear it. Now, you also can't go into the conversation with a goal in mind, the goal being that the person's gonna tell you that they don't cheat, never would cheat, never cheated on anybody, and then you can now marry the person. Because if that's your, you know, if that's your goal and you are seen as somebody with a goal, or what uh, Werner Earhart calls already always thinking, if you're there, then there's no possibility for somebody to really fess up and be honest with you. So that is then not on them, it's on you. So what you have to be able to do is have an honest conversation in which somebody knows it's safe to tell the truth. And my favorite story about what doesn't work, because it's a great story, was my former fiance's parents, and she suspected that he was having an affair because he had a dop kit that she found under the passenger seat of their car. And she thought, like, what's that doing here? Okay, why is he taking that to work? So they're in the car, and she's in the passenger seat, and she pulls it out, and she says, okay, Paul, what's this? And I will not punish you. I will not ask for a divorce. I will not leave you. I will not do any of that. I want you to just tell me the truth. I really need to hear the truth. So Paul, the wonderful guy that he was, said, okay, well, I've got to tell you the truth. The truth is, I have been seeing somebody. And she said, I want a divorce! <laughs> oh, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. It isn't worth it. What you want to do is either learn from me, have a private session with me, or learn what we're going to talk about later in the show, but don't do one of those. Because you can imagine the kind of divorce they had. <laughs> 